Hello friends! In this video, I'm going to tell you about a new, interesting experiment that I'm about to perform on myself. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, and comment on the video to help the channel. Now let's get started. Today I really just wanted to talk to you guys about a new experiment that I'm about to perform on myself. Normally, my videos are quite formal, and I was starting to realize, you know, maybe it makes it a bit difficult for people to get into new subjects that I'm exploring myself. So I thought it would be good, before I do a comprehensive academic review on this subject, introducing why I want to do my experiment and the literature history on the subject, I thought I could just sit with you guys today and tell you about why I wanted to do this experiment. I think that this experiment will be the first time somebody has, has chronicled their attempt to kill senescent cells in their own, own body, at least on video. So it's some kind of a first, which excites me. What are senescent cells? Now you guys probably have heard me talk about senescent cells a lot on the channel, but let me summarize here what they are. They're a kind of cell in the body that produces, um, that contributes to aging in a couple of ways. One way that it, they contribute to aging is that they cause local inflammation, which contributes to systemic inflammation, and systemic chronic inflammation is a driver of, one of, of all of the diseases of aging. So that's one way. Senescent cells contribute to inflammation. The second way that senescent cells contribute to aging is by the way that they affect quality of life. So because senescent cells cause a what's called a paracrine local secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines from the immune system, they create inflammation locally where they reside. They produce heightened senses of pain in the elderly. It seems that a lot of reason for us feeling pain in old age, like when we have osteoarthritis, is not just because of mechanical issues in our joints, not having enough cartilage and so on, but actually the inflammation that occurs in the joints, much of which is driven by the presence of senescent cells. To summarize, senescent cells do two things that contribute to aging. Number one, the chronic systemic inflammation that they create directly contributes to the diseases of aging. And number two, the chronic inflammation that they create directly contributes or worsens our quality of life, causing us to feel chronic pain in old age. So senescent cells are really quite annoying. Now, what are these senescent cells? Senescent cells, as you guys may have heard on my channel before, they're created actually in two ways. One way is through replicative senescence. That is, your cells in your body divide. And they divide based on uh, a number of things, what kind of cell they are, how much growth factors there are in, in the body at the time, and so on. But they usually divide between 30 and 40 times before they reach a dead end in cell division. When they reach this dead end called the Hayflick limit, they either die or they become these zombie-like senescent cells, which cause local inflammation. They, you can think of senescent cells like cancer cells that don't divide. So they cause a lot of inflammation, a lot of uh, uh, dysfunctional biology, local to themselves, but they don't divide and spread. But that eh, they do a little bit spread because they the local secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines in the area can sometimes damage other cells and make them become senescent. Which is why sometimes you'll find, like if you have a white beard hair, you'll suddenly start to notice white beard hair start to accumulate around that individual hair originally. There's another way that cells become senescent though. They also become senescent via stress. So stress-induced senescence is another way that cells become senescent. So there's two ways in which senescent cells are, are developed. But in either case, they produce local inflammation and are harmful, potentially ca causing aging, the diseases of aging, as well as ca worsening our quality of life or our health span. But the thing is, we don't wanna actually stop senescent cells from being born. If you, senescent cells in a sense, the fact that they become senescent and, don't, and the cells don't just keep dividing, in a way they protect us from cancers. Their existence, their development protects us from cancers. But once they have developed, there is very much reason to think that we'd want to get rid of them. And getting rid of them earlier rather than later may be really protective and may potentially even extend lifespan. Now in the last couple of decades, researchers have developed uh, two kinds of molecules that are very interesting to us in regard to senescence. One group is called sinomorphics or sinostatics. These are molecules that in somehow inhibit the pro-inflammatory signaling of, sen of senescent cells, limiting basically the damage they're causing to the body acutely. On the other hand, there are molecules called sinolytics. Sinolytics kill senescent cells, some more selectively than others. Sinomorphics and sinolytics have different molecular targets and different mechanisms by which they work. In the next video in this series, I'm going to go comprehensively through a list of sinomorphics and sinolytics, going through their molecular targets, and we're going to discuss how maybe choosing uh, sinolytics that have different molecular targets may have synergistic effects when combined together. Now I've been having a hell of a time trying to get my hands on these molecules. 
Some of the molecules are easier to get than others, but the most attractive ones are anti-cancer drugs, which are number one, very expensive, and number two, very hard to get prescribed. However, I've been having a little bit more luck recently, and this is the main reason I've delayed making these videos, because I've been trying to get my hands on the drugs that I want. I'm probably going to be going with dasatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor and an anti-cancer medication, azithromycin, which is an antibiotic that works through autophagy in creating uh, uh, in killing senescent cells. And I'll be using probably quercetin as well as fisetin, which work through different pathways. We'll get into that in the next video. So I'll probably be using these four, and I'm probably going to be doing my synolytic regimen, which is only going to take a few days, during my first return to my five-day monthly fast very soon. Because during a fast, essentially a lot of things are going on that cause a synomorphic situation where they inhibit some of the, the activities of senescent cells and make them more vulnerable to stress, uh, which will be induced by the desatinib, the azithromycin, and so on. I may also be using HDAC inhibitors simultaneously, and I will probably be using rapamycin because it's going to be in my fast. So there'll be other drugs that are synergistic with the synolytics, but I'll probably be using desatinib, azithromycin, quercetin, and fisetin as the main synolytics for the experiment. Anyway, guys, I hope this is interesting for you. These synolytics in trials, like for example, the satinib and quercetin have been trialed a lot, azithromycin have been tried a lot. Depending on the tissue, they sometimes kill up to 50% of senescent cells. So I'm really hoping that this one fast and this one trial with a few of these drugs will make a significant difference in the way I feel and in the inflammation that I carry. But if not, I'm going to be trialing it probably month on month for a little while. And I'll try to see how the results are, how they feel, and whether they are visible in my blood work. And I'll report back to you guys. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me. I hope to see you again next time.